Hi folks, Lance from Runtime Recruitment. Hope you're having a good time wherever you are. Another little quick video. This time we're going to talk about machine learning, in particular tiny ML, tiny machine learning I guess, computing at the edge. There's a lot of talk about computing at the edge. Typically this applies to things like autonomous cars, which are really supercomputers on wheels, and they have a lot of compute power. But what about small computers, microcontrollers? Is there a case for machine learning within microcontrollers, which are limited by memory, limited by clock cycles? You know, companies like Exmos, who are bringing out their new version of Xcore.ai, which is a microcontroller, which is designed specifically for edge computing applications. So I don't know if this is the case or not, but uh, Exmos claims that they have a better idea about what uh, edge computing should be and their offering is much more competitive in the marketplace. Well, well, that's yet to be seen because their chipset hasn't really been released to the public yet. There are some beta trials going on. You can buy some evaluation boards, but as far as its application, in particular edge computing um, scenarios, we don't know how that's going to pan out in the future. STM Electronics is also offering um, their STM32 Cube AI uh, platform, which is the actual algorithms, I guess, and also their silicon. So they're, they're actually offering it. And so is, um, so is Google. You know, Google with TensorFlow Lite is designed to run on low-powered microcontrollers at the edge. So let's have a look at some of the applications. So what STM is offering their STM32Cube.ai is this is the kind of workflow. You know, it's, it's really taking the actual data from the edge doing some computation at the edge on the microcontroller, packetizing that information and sending it out to the cloud for further processing. That's the idea. So they can run some algorithms actually on the microcontroller. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of those applications in a minute. But then a lot of that data is then shifted to the cloud for additional and further processing. So here's an example of human activity recognition. This is one of the examples for edge computing with microcontrollers. So let's say you have a Fitbit or you have a smartwatch that's recording your body motions using some sort of accelerometer. It's then talking to your phone by a Bluetooth. Basically, that's sent to the cloud for processing, or it can be processed locally on your smartphone. Smartphones are pretty sophisticated compute engines now, and they can do a lot of the number crunching for the algorithms on the smartphone. So the sensor itself, which is embedded in the actual watch or some sort of a Fitbit, captures the information, does a little bit of processing on, on, on device, and then sends it out to further processing to the smartphone. And then in that then in turn talks to the cloud. So this is just one example. Another one is that the embedded motion controller in this case is a pre-processing engine will do some inference processing uh, using neural nets on the microcontroller and then via Bluetooth transmit that to the phone. So here's some other typical applications, things like sensory analysis, activity recognition, stress analysis or tension analysis, audio and sound. But there are definitely use cases where you can use a microcontroller with some pattern recognition or with some neural nets built onto the microcontroller to do some processing on the chip. So you can see here key steps behind neural networks. Neural network model creation, then the operating mode itself. So that you have to train this neural net in some way. You have to capture the data. You have to clean the data. Then you have to train the neural net model. And then you convert that neural net into an optimized code for the microcontroller. And then when you give it data from the real world, it will spit out the appropriate analysis of that particular bit of data and then send that out for a further processing to the cloud or your smartphone. So this is a great opportunity, as it says here, TinyML is a giant opportunity. So there's lots of use cases that they're saying that these can be applied to. Xmos, for instance, is chasing the audio market where they're looking for patterns in audio using microphones. They pick up a certain sound, they put it through a processing uh, engine, and then they apply this machine learning to maybe do things like they can hone in on particular speakers, they can do noise cancellation, do, do all sorts of things using audio processing and machine learning. So that's just one of the use cases. There's 
many use cases that you can see which are very narrow AI at the edge. And perhaps uh, that's where, you know, this tiny ML will make a big, big impact. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments field. Let me know if you guys are using any of these uh, machine learning libraries, tiny ML. So let me know where you think this is going. I personally think that engineers now that are actually working as firmware engineers, software engineers and electronic engineers, you guys need to skill up. You need to really get yourself skilled up on machine learning in general because it's coming big time and it's going to come to the edge. It's already there with the higher end of uh, compute engines, things like autonomous vehicles, which have got supercomputers in them, but it's definitely kind of go all the way trickling down towards the microcontroller, as you can see now with tiny ML. I mean, you've got the likes of TensorFlow Lite, which is by Google. Amazon is in on it. They bought free RTOS and they're going to be bundling, you know, machine learning at the edge libraries onto that as well. So it's definitely coming. So you guys skill up, get yourself a board, an Arduino board or a Raspberry Pi and uh, play around with some of this technology because it's definitely going to impact your job. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments field. It's always a pleasure to talk with you all and I hope you're well and you're all good out there wherever you are. See you in the next one. Cheers.